excellent. Today we are going to be making a super fun craft. These are no sew quilted fabric ornaments. They are so cute. We, when Emmeline first showed me this, I thought that they were adorable. She wanted to do her entire tree with it. It's something she's done with her grandmother for years. Yeah. And I thought it was a fabulous idea. Yes. Let's just hang these on the tree and get them out of the way temporarily. We'll just kind of stick sure. them on here for now. And let's begin going with some supplies that you're going to need for this wonderful craft. All right. First and foremost is the fabric. Yes. Yeah. Very important. We have laid out here in front of us this assortment of beautiful Christmas colors. I really like the classic look. Mm, me too. When, when we've done them before, I really felt like the colors that were boldest and, the, and that had these bright designs stood out the most. Yes, exactly. So you can make this really easy by picking up a jelly roll, you know, those rolls of fabrics that are pre-cut into the two and a half inch strips. That makes it really simple. But it's gonna be more expensive, right? Exactly, that is exactly right. Those will cost you almost double the amount of what the method that we're going to do today. So what we did is we went down to the fabric store and we just selected 10 different colors, okay? And how much did you get of each color? Well, because I'm doing my whole tree, I bought a little more. But let's, let's talk about the amount that you need to do one dozen Christmas ornaments. You need one quarter yard, mm -hmm. so a fourth of a yard of 10 different colors, okay? So that's going to allow you to make 30 strips and it takes three strips per ball, but uh, per ornament, but then you have a little bit of leftovers at the end, and those leftovers create two more. So you end right. up with one dozen fabric ornaments with um, a quarter yard of fabric, so one fourth yard of fabric. Some of the other supplies we're gonna need is going to be some of the self-healing uh, cutting mats and some rulers. We're going to need a rotary cutter and a pair of scissors. Okay, so these things are kind of standard. The next thing that you need, this is the, the main supplies, okay? We need three inch craft balls. And there's different kinds of craft balls. We found that we liked the ones that had a little bit denser of the foam. Exactly, and you'll need um, a dozen of those. You're going to need satin pins. Okay, now these are one inch satin pins you can use smaller size you can use any size you want but what we found we're going to show you these one inch satin pins what we found for this project is the this is a good size they're well and easily hidden but yet they're large enough to secure the fabric without having too much tug on it yeah if they're too if they're too short then they don't anchor it quite as well especially for that center pin when you put it on it's important for it to be long enough to withstand a little bit of, of pressure. Exactly. Next, what we'll need, you're going to want some corsage pins. These are what you use to put right in the top of your ornament, okay? And we've got one with a little bit of extra bling that Emmeline found for us today. Super fun. I guess they use these for the bouquets for like brides and that kind mm -hmm. of a thing. You may or may not want a thimble. You know, if you're doing just one of these, your finger's going to probably be fine. But if you are doing a dozen of these, by the end of it, you are going to want a thimble. Gets pretty tender. And last but not, or two things left, you'll uh, possi oops, possibly want a glue gun. Um, at the very end, you'll either be given an option for a hot glue gun or for using the pins. And last is the ribbon. Seven, you're going to want seven eighths inch ribbon to go around your ornament, and you're going to want some smaller ribbon. Now this one, you see I, I have a sheer seven eighths with it as well, mm -hmm. but you'll want the flexible smaller ribbons to kind of be your, your, um, your hangers. hangers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that simple should kind of be the rule of thumb when it comes to the ribbon because you don't want it to draw all the attention away from your quilting. Exactly. And I, as you can tell, sparkle I like sparkle. <laughs> right, right. So the sparkle and bling, and these have wire in them, which will, you'll find that it's not necessary, but it does make it really good to secure an anchor at the end. But we'll talk about that at the end. 
All right, to get started, let's talk about contrast of our fabrics. You can yes. see in these beautiful Christmas ornaments that each one has some variation. Okay. So let's now talk about fabrics because now seeing that we need some some contrast in our mm -hmm. ornaments Let's see what we have in fabrics here. Yep. So we've got we've got a green with gold All of these we went ahead and picked out with a little gold accent Which is nice because that goes across all of them the iridescent even the shine is a little bit golden mm -hmm. generally speaking the way you're gonna want to do it is is pick one red one of the light and one of the green or you can do another variation if you right. choose. I think so. for today I'm gonna to do one of the, each of the I think three. I will too. Yeah, I like so it. So which ones do you want to select for today? Okay, so for today I think I'm gonna do the swirly green. Okay. And let's see, the snowflake white. Excellent. And the spotted red. Okay, I'm going to do the holly berry, the swirly white, and the iridescent red. <laughs> Obviously, I like iridescent a right. lot. Okay. Very pretty. Okay, in the next stage, we're going to show you how to cut the fabrics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to set up, in order to cut, you'll need your rotary mat, your uh, rotary cutter, your mat, and your ruler. Okay. You also need the fabric that you're going to cut, and you may need to iron it before you go on to this step. Mm -hmm. To prep this, we need to cut strips. Okay, so we need one strip of each of our three colors. Each strip needs to be two and one half inches wide. So what I, because you are right-handed, let's See show how much easier, how much that easier is. it is. So sure. remember, um, if you, you know, right or left-handed, make sure your fabric is going the correct way. The so way turn it around this way ah, now. I see. Mm -hmm. Remember, your rulers have the numbers, and so you know, you'll just need to Make sure you have two yeah, and that's a half a lot inches. Easier. <laughs> yeah, see? Than crossing over myself. See how much nicer that is. So it can be done the other way, but yeah, this is better. I feel like I can I can hold the the little guide better. Yeah, and we're not getting as many glitches on right, the fabric. Right, right. Yeah. And it just feels more natural. Okay. Okay, we'll be back in just a second as soon as we have all of our fabric cut. You just so let's talk about how we're going to, before we do the cuts, because we need eight center squares mm -hmm. and 16 middle squares and 16 outer squares. Sure. Okay, so let's talk about our order that we want to put these in. Because, you know, as you saw from our ornaments, the order creates the different There's a looks. different feel to right. it. Right. Sure. So, for me, I'm going to put the holly berry in the center. Oh, I, I think that's pretty. Yeah. And then I'm actually going to go with my red in the center, and I'm going to put my gold on the outside, and then when I select my ribbon, it will also be gold. So I'll actually have a lot of gold sparkles on the outside. Oh, right. But I don't have any of that coordination on my tree yet. Sure. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm going to do that. Okay. Let's start with eight of our holly berry. So again, I have my lined up edges and you see the selvage edge there has a lot of white that we're going to want to cut off. So I'm going to move. So you don't put it quite to the end, you just do right. it a little bit before. I don't want to right? waste a mm -hmm. bunch of extra. And the great thing about this project is there is so little, little waste. So I'm just going to take it right up there to my edge. And if you want your lines to be lined up so that you make sure your cuts are, that's great. For me, I already know this is two and a half inches. I don't really care where it's at on my mat. My important part is the ruler on the top. Sure. So I'm just going to cut this off and throw it in my trash pile. So now I need two and a half inches here. So I need to kind of, for my purposes, I need to turn it around. And I'm gonna, again, line up so I have my two and a half inches right here. And again, if you want me to straighten this, because I know somebody in the comments is gonna say, it would have been better if you'd line that up it for us. It does make sure that you do a nice straight yes, cut. Yes, it does. So here, I'll do that. So four. And then you just kind of put those to the side. And then eight. 
So this is what I need for my inside. But you know sure. what? Because I'm at it, I'm just gonna do, and just gonna show you here, we are going to do the 12 and then the 16. And when I line- And these last two cuts are just gonna be your extra that you'll use on one of the other balls, exactly. right? Exactly, you are exactly right. Since so. that's your middle. But on the, on the edge pieces, you'll use all of this. Exactly. Perfect. And let's move on to the next stage. Mm -hmm. Right. We have mm -hmm. all of our squares cut, yes. eight of our center, mm -hmm. 16 of each additional round. So let's teach a trick. Okay. Everybody likes to have a trick that helps streamline, make things more efficient. Right. The way you can do this, that I've seen it done a lot, is you know, they'll take and they'll fold each square, put the pin in, pick up the ball, stick it down, put the ball down, do the next one, prep it. And what's happening is this whole time as you're putting more and more fabric squares in, your ball's getting lopsided and it's rolling. It gets a little fumbly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is let's prep our squares. I think that's a good idea. So let's do one full round. So let's prep um, four centers, eight. Because this is all for one side, right? Yeah. Two, four, six, eight of round one, of the second round, and eight, two, four, six, of round two. And the way you prep these, so we're just going to move these others out because we do half of the ball at once and then half of the ball the second time. So the way you do this is you take and you fold them inside out. So halfway and halfway and you finger press. Okay. So just right on that corner you kind of kind of use your finger to to make it nice and flat. Exactly. Then you can open it up and write, you can see the, the X's and put your pin in from the wrong side. Just like that. Coming out through the correct side. Now what I like to do, so that's one way to finger press. I actually like to catch mine just a tiny bit. My grandma used to always do this. Maybe that's uh, why I probably. do it. Probably, that's fine. And yeah, I can see it there, but I also see right where I'd put my pin in and then I can put my pin in that way. So we have prepped, oops, you just dropped Ooh, one. Yes, I did. We have prepped our um, squares. Uh, every single one of these has the pin going from the underneath up through the top. So let's take a look at our balls here. Okay. Because what do you notice about these so these balls. balls we're actually very lucky with because these balls have a line on them here and they also have a dot here. So those are just kind of some orientation points that I think that we could use. Exactly. I think I want to start by using the top line. Sure. Because I line can't guarantee on like this one that I'd have something on the other side because it's only on one. Sure. But this one will give me at least half for side two. So let's begin by taking your ball and take your first fabric square with your pin. Take that pin and if your ball also has a, a line, stick it right on the line. If your ball doesn't have a line, then just stick it in your ball. Just anywhere. choose a place to put it. It yeah. doesn't really matter for that first one. Exactly. Then what we're going to do is you see you have your ball with it just stuck in. You want to fold it towards yourself. Okay. Now I'm going to use that horizon line as my guide for my very first one just because it's easy. But you fold it in half and then you fold these into triangles. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your pin and you're going to pin it right there at that middle point. And then you're gonna follow the line, the triangle out, and you're going to put a second pin. And just kind of smooth along that edge to get that down mm -hmm. to the furthest point that you need. I'm gonna, okay, then smooth down the second line pin it and you can see that that middle fold right there the middle line matches right up with our line there mm -hmm. if there's no line then that doesn't really matter but yeah it can be helpful if there is one okay then when you're ready take your second one 
And the trick to this one is getting it just as close as possible to the tip of the first one. Okay, and push it down in there. And then fold again, fold it towards you. And do the same thing, fold it into the triangle. Pin the bottom. Follow the line out. Pin your corner and do it again. Follow it and Okay, so for the third, again, put your pin right there as close to your center as you possibly can. I just bent a pin. Oh no. That's okay. If you do that, just set that pin to the side and replace it. And if you don't have those center pins right in the middle right close to the other one then you can end up um, with a little bit of your ball showing so you just that's kind of important yes it is okay now with these ones see we're on that interior it will overlap a little bit and that is correct if we were to force it to come along this line and pin down here, you see we would end up with a pucker right here. We don't want that. A little bit of overlap is natural for the way that the size of these squares is and whatnot. And really, I mean, this, this technique, there's going to be some tricks with each layer, but this folding technique is the same process we're going to use over and over throughout both sides, all rows of our ball. And that's where it can be really fun to make it with a friend because then you can both talk together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the fourth one, again, just stick it as close to that center as possible. Fold it towards yourself. I like to use the previous row as my guide there. And again, if we have our little Horizon line, that works as well. Now it takes about 200 pins per ball. Yeah, that's so many. Yeah, it's a lot of pins. And, and you can buy the pins in bulk, right? Yes, like this one is 750 uh, pins, but I've seen them on Amazon. There's a really good deal on there where you can get like 3,000 pins for oh, like $10.99. In fact, if you come to our website, I'll put a link on the post. Make it. it a little easier. Yeah, you can find it that way. I have a sister-in-law who sells crafty items, especially like around the holidays. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna give her the link to our video so that she can learn oh, how to do this. Oh, excellent, excellent. Okay. So, okay. color two. Now for round two, it doesn't really um, matter which square you start on, which we're with round three, it will, but we'll get to that. But what you want to do is see how each section, each of these triangles has a uh, center point. What you want to do is you want to go into one of those centers. Now we want about half inch. Now it's just an eyeball. We don't need to get a ruler out. What I do though, that I like is I use my thumb. To I thought like my thumb was a good good yeah. distance too. So I don't like press it down and, and choose my fattest point. What I do is I just stick my thumb basically on the line of the top. Of the middle there, right? And then I take my pin and right about the edge of my thumb, right at that center, I put my, my pin in. Then what you can kind of see here is it will line up along the edge of your green, of your first color basically, okay? So then when you start folding it down, what you want to do is you want to follow that line because these guides of these lines are what we use throughout the entire ornament to create the symmetry of it. 
Um, which is what really makes it so beautiful. Exactly, I think so. Otherwise, if you don't, your points, you know, one star is going to be one way, and then your next star is going to be off and a little wonky. Right. The the ends will be a little wonky. Exactly. Not that it wouldn't still be pretty. But... Oh, it could still be gorgeous. In mm -hmm. fact, if you like that, you could do it purposefully. You could purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Now the next thing, and I didn't point this out before, but I'm going to point it out now. You always want to work in quadrants across from each other. So think of this as like your X and Y axis in math. <laughs> you know, quadrant one, two, three, and four. When you choose to work in one, always work across from it so that um, that also creates that symmetry. So that it's on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. By doing that, we, we keep our design even. We keep... Um, if you have to pick something out, you you don't pick out as many layers. Right, right. Right, because you can work in. And I've I've had to pick stuff out before, but I also know how to kind of hide it. And when we get onto layer three, I'll show you some tricks if you happen to have something happen. I'll do it on purpose. Right. <laughs> okay. I hope your ball is going wonderfully at this point. Okay, we're on to the third one. Again, I'm still just using my thumb as my guide, sticking my pin right there in that center point. You can really see our star is beginning to show here. Line these up. And then you see on this one, they're coming close. They may or may not overlap on your edges here. And that is correct. It's just fine. Mine are just close, but those will be covered by layer three. And I've already started using my thumb thimble just because now my finger's starting to get just a little bit tender from poking it in. Mm -hmm. Plus, we've made a dozen right. already. <laughs> I'm feeling it as well. You know, the thimble may not be necessary on the first one or two, but I guarantee you, after you've made a dozen, your fingers can really feel the tenderness right there. These thimbles are kind of fun. That's That's a just a plain old one. This one, my mother-in-law um, collected thimbles. Yeah. And when she passed it, this one says, I love you on it. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Super cute. Here. She collected thimbles and she passed away a couple of years ago. And when my husband went and helped clean out some things, he brought back a bunch of her craft things. Um, Everyone knew in the family that, that you were I was a crafting, yes. and I sent home all the yarn and a bunch of, of craft supplies, that and my nice. husband grabbed this thimble for me, and I use it as a memory of my mother-in-law. She was very crafty as well. Sure. Okay, we have the first four ready here. Now we're going to move into these secondary sections, and you'll, you'll notice, you know, we don't have the straight Vs because we're in the corners. But we're going to do it the exact same way. We're just going to set our thumb down, stick it in the middle. Now, some of your fabrics may overlap a little bit and some may come right on and touch. Either way is correct. You'll just want to find as close to that dead center right there using where they overlap as the, the spot and then you push it in. Now, when you begin folding this, you're going to see, if we get in close here, See how these edges do not necessarily, um, this is not straight with them. These are, are a little different. That's correct. In fact, my fold's a little off there, so it looks there. See, that's, we're at about the same distance with those. So when I go and I fold in, we just want to follow that same line down using the center guide of where those first two triangles come together. And I actually decided to redo my 
fourth green one here because it just didn't quite look symmetrical to me. I felt like I felt like it was too far up. Okay. So I just unpinned it and am repinning it right now. And see here how these, you know, the first ones, the four kind of lined up. On the second layer, they were kind of straight down. Um, and the two came together, but on this layer, they pop down a little. That's correct. You're just fine. And if yours don't do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. Um, but you're going to just see, I want, I just want to show each of these layers to you to know that, um, yeah, like when I line mine up, you can see how it's down from the tips, which is, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Working your cross. Oh, that's smart. Get them all started and then push them all in at once. Yeah, I felt like it was saving time because otherwise I was putting the thimble on, taking it off. Yeah. Not. Oops, look at me. I just bent another one. The larger pins and this stiffer styrofoam ball, you will find you have the tendency to possibly bend some pins. Um, there's the secondary styrofoam balls that are kind of look a little crumbly. Mm -hmm. um, we've used those in the past. Those, the pins go through easily, but they don't stick as strongly. Right, they, they come have, out just as easily. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, you need to figure out what works best for you. A smaller... Pin may be harder to push through this ball too. We may bend right. those way too easily. I mean, so are we ready for round three? I think we are. Okay. Round three, what we need to do is I was just explaining the quadrants to you a minute ago. So we have underneath is where we need to start. So we have the center, the middle, and then our third color is gonna go on top of that, making sure that you begin on a quadrant where it's underneath. One of the first four of the second color exactly. as opposed to the, the second four. Exactly. Okay. Same exact process. This is super simple. Use whatever you're using to measure your distance for me. It's my thumb. And begin our same process. Now you're going to find that your final color will have a tendency for the fabrics to line up more than the other, than the middle one, as you get. Working across to the, the, opposite, the opposite quadrant side. underneath, the one that's underneath, and put this one on. So really, it's it's up to you what look you want. And remember, you don't have to use red and gold. No, you could have like a silver and blue tree and yes. add those on it. Um, I have a friend who is really into um, doing superhero stuff. And I was talking oh. to her about maybe altering the way you do the center to make it like the shape of superhero signs. Oh. Well, Wouldn't get this. Fun? Find a piece of fabric that has a superhero on it, oh. and instead of doing and make that in the center, put it on the center and just pin it down. Oh, so instead and just of work doing around a star, it. work right. around that as your center. Totally oh, different variation. Yeah. You would only need one piece of fabric for your center rather than the four. You would just skip that first one. Right. Measure out, and you'd have a star and around begin it. Your second. That would be super cute to do with like a nativity. Oh, you know, yes. if you could find some yes. something that had a teeny tiny nativity on mm -hmm. it, that'd be really oh, cute. Oh, that would be adorable. Oh, see, look at all the fun ideas that you can do with this. That's right. That's right. I mean, you can really all do kinds anything. Of ways. Anything. If you're a cat lover, find a piece of fabric with a cat on it right. and put it in the middle. Right. <gasps> you know, also, um, one of the crafts my mother-in-law used to do is she would print 
baby pictures on fabric and oh. do those iron on transfers. So you could do something like that. You could put well. your child and maybe make um, baby's first year, baby's first Christmas, right. take a picture of your of your son or daughter, and transpose it onto an iron on, onto a, like a white piece of fabric, iron it on there, set that as your center, and then do whatever colors that right. you want to coordinate around it. Like white and pink if it was a little girl. Yeah. Wouldn't that just be a stunning, even as a gift for somebody. Right. You know? Okay. So there's my first four quadrants. Now see how the red is really close to lining up. By the third row, because that, that secondary horizons are are the centers, we're kind of hitting the center there. And so you'll you should find that that's happening. If it's not, really check your lines and make sure that you're not angled a little bit because it is really important on this last round. Um, because yes, the ribbon's gonna cover some of it, so it is a little forgiving, but we don't want to accidentally have a, a piece a chunk jetting out underneath our ribbon later sure so i have my four quadrants let's move on to oops sorry i'm throwing my thumb that's okay in. the last four how close are you are you on that i'm working on the last four x oh you're already there you're ahead of me yeah sorry that's okay a bit. oh i started talking you know me i talk a lot Okay, so see how we have our center, the first four of the second round, the second four of the second round, and then we have the insides and the outsides of round three. Okay, so let's, oh, stunning. Doesn't Those that look so good? I really like made. how they worked. Well, and it's all the same colors, green, right. gold, and red. But look at the variation between the two of them with the darker red and the lighter totally green. Totally different feels. Yeah. Okay, so for round two, um, first of all, let's prep our squares. Again, we just need to begin this by doing the same thing we did last time. Okay? And so I actually have them all prepped here except these three. I just wanted to make you aware that we are on round two and we need to prepare these. So go ahead and pause the video, prep the ones from the other side if you haven't done it already, and then we will teach you how to do the other side. Yeah. So what do you see about your ornament as we have the first side done? So if you set it down, it's gonna roll and it automatically rolls to the bottom side. Exactly. Because there's so much weight there. Exactly. Mine is sitting a tiny bit lopsided. You know, it settles. Oh yeah. Um, so we don't, this gives us a good gauge of basically where the top is, but you need to be careful with it because, you know, they're not gonna sit exactly perfect. Sure. Take number one of your first color and what you want to do is you want to look okay so see how we have the four triangles and then we have where they come together what we want to do is we want to follow the line of the triangle and now we remember we have our horizon line here and that's going to be the inside so so if you don't have a line on yours like we do on ours you mm -hmm. could always write it on there with a with a pen or a pencil and just kind of follow that line yeah. of you see the the crack here and there and there and our line makes it nice and easy to follow that 
Then what I do, try to find, I like to kind of look down on it, find my center. And how I measure this is I push the first one in and then I look over here and I'm like, okay, I've got about that much room there, about that much room there, a little bit there. Oh, I'm a little close. So see how I have a larger amount over here than I do over here? So I'm going to actually move mine just a tiny bit and look at it again. Oh, see, now I'm more centered, more there, more there, and there. Okay, so by just tugging this along and seeing the edges, you can really find your center easily. So now I say, okay, this is going to be the line I'm going to follow with my center. I'm going to fold it down towards me and begin my pinning. And I'm using that line. So those are just some tricks on how to line it up. Again, working opposite sides, we are going to do this ball, this half of the ball, exactly like we did the last half. Now, as we start getting to round three, you may have some overlap with your previous round or they may not quite connect. Both is correct and it doesn't matter because our ribbon will um, correct it for us. So we're going to um, just be back in a minute when we are up to all three rounds being completed. See you in a minute. Bye-bye. All right, how'd yours turn out? So it turned out pretty good. I'm I'm pleased with the contrast between it. You can see that they overlapped here. In fact, they overlapped quite a bit. So I'm going to need mm -hmm. a nice wide ribbon to cover that and make sure that my tips are the same distance on each side of it. Exactly. How about and you? Mine, it turned out perfect. You know, I've got the good contrast of color. I've got a pretty decent overlap. You can see my, you know, my lines, it lines up great. Um, same thing, you know, all, always the side that you did first is going to have smaller triangles than the side you did second because you pin over the top. Sure, sure. And they don't ever, or very rarely do they land right at I suppose if you made other. it really narrow, you might have a little gap there instead. And that's but true. I, I wanted to show more of the colors in between, so exactly. that's why I did it that way. I, I like it that way too. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's pick our ribbon. So we have three options for our centers, we have a all glitter and bling sparkles. We have a little chevron pattern, and we have a gold running with a white ivory kind of creamy color in the middle. So which one do you think you like? So I think it would be really fun with those polka dots at the edge to do the chevron. Okay. I think that would look nice. And I'm going to do this edge because I have a lot of red here. Oh, I want to so bring elegant. more of that cream in. Mm -hmm. Now there's two ways that you can add your ribbon. Um, let's talk about way one, which we are not going to do, but I'm going to tell you why not. So the first way is like with hot glue gun. Right. You can either glue directly onto the ball or onto the ribbon, take it around, um, and then affix it. Okay? Well, and that sounds really simple, but... It is. So why don't you like it? Because the glue becomes brittle over the years and has a tendency to disconnect from the fabric and fall off. So my grandma, that's the way she did all of the balls at the ends because she didn't want any pins showing whatsoever. Sure. And that's the advantage, no pins show. The disadvantage is your ball long term, um, you may have to reaffix some of that glue in future years when you're pulling out your ornaments mm -hmm. and looking at them, you'd need to inspect each one and maybe slip some new glue in. And if you're gonna make something like this, you may as well make it to last. Exactly, that's why I like to use um, ribbon. So some of these ribbons, like this one, has a little bit of wire in it. Um, does yours have wire? Mine doesn't no. have the okay. wire. And neither does mine. So without the wire, it's gonna be really smooth on there, but with the wire, it really holds the pins super nice. What you do with your ribbon, whether you're gluing it or pinning it, you want to take and you want to try to find where you cover all of your pins but that you have as close to an even amount of your last round of triangles of fabrics of the squares made in triangles so see for me that's about right there 
Then you take your pins and what you want to do is you want to pin them right in here so that I'm going to pin inside of my gold strip because these silver pins pretty much disappear in that view. And so you pin the edge, you start with your two corners. Then what I like to do is I use the lines of each set of the triangles as my guides. And, and you I can pin... see, sorry for interrupting, no, no. but you can see that mine were not perfectly lined up. Hers look beautiful that way. So that's, that's a benefit of experience, I think. <laughs> but even with it that way, it's okay. You can still make it work. Yeah. So using, you and your pins could just be staggered a little bit, but right. I like to, that's kind of my gauge of distance. I like to sit and just put my pins right at those same lines. Now you see, using this method, these pins show. But it's so little and it just adds sparkle. When the lights are on your tree and this is in there, I really don't see it. I don't think it would be a problem. And maybe use smaller pins for this round. Get the little guys, maybe the half inch or the, the five eighths instead of the one inch. Or you, you could use more decorative ones oh. and do it specifically so that it does show. Exactly. So think about if we were sticking these pearls along and you would end up with or a maybe pearl a smaller at one. everyone, right? Or a smaller. So um, one of, I don't have them out there in my craft cabinet, but I have pins with little white beads on the top, little tiny ones. Kind of like this, only smaller, with that blue pin right there. And you could stick those on and that would just be or added. You could do a little red or green one. I yes. mean, depending on what kind of look you're going for. Exactly, that's a great idea. And think about that, you know? You can decorate these any way you want. When we do the hanger at the top, you know, we're going to have these little bling pins can you see that there? Yeah, I think so. We're gonna have these little bling pins, but um, you could do anything. Think about putting like a little cluster of holly berries off of like oh, a- Oh yeah, that would be cute. A, a fun little thing. So you just follow along. I like to hold it tight. Pin it down. Ah, look at this guy was a little small, but that's okay. We see less red. Okay, we're just wrapping up these in. So before I get to the very last one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of run my ribbon out and I like to look at about half inch overlap or inch overlap because then I'm going to cut my ribbon and for me, I'm going to fold it under. I like to have that perfectly crisp edge. And this could just be me being a little too overly perfect with mine, but I like to fold it until my edge lines up with that same row, okay? This is, and it, you know, for you, it doesn't matter, but I'm just trying to show you what I like to do because then that's where you can put your hanging ribbon and have it hang exactly. with the design perfectly straight. Exactly, okay. that's that makes sense. Exactly why. And then I come back here and pin that last two that I had skipped over so that I made sure that I had enough room to tuck that other one. Cause you can kind of see it folds back and it almost folds back to where those pins would have been depending on how wide you cut it. Okay. So we are making excellent progress with this. The last thing is the hanger. We're gonna let Marie finish up here and we're gonna look. We have, from just what I have on hand, I have some red uh, leaf with gold filigree and I have some gold. For me, I'm going to select the gold um, because I have a lot of red out here plus my white and gold here this little edging on this matches this perfectly. So I thought that would be great for me. And I think I'm gonna go with the gold too. So I'm just gonna wait until you're okay. done with that. We'll just we'll cut off a little chunk there. Sure, so about how many so, inches do you think that is? Eh, however big you want your hanger. It's really, you can make it any different you want. I don't know, it's probably, I don't Maybe know. Maybe about 12? Yeah, yeah, about probably, 12 inches. Probably about 12 inches. 
really there's no science to it. You know, we're not meticulously measuring this. And you can see Marie's just tying a knot in the top. So loop it so that you have a clean loop there. Put them together. Make yourself a knot in the top with however, you know, deep you want your your little ties at the beginning. You can angle these or, you know, another fun thing, sometimes my grandma used to do this, she'd fold it in half and then slice it and okay, so you end the up ribbon the little ribbon look, mm -hmm. you know. Then you want to take your center corsage pin, or for us, we're going to use these beautiful wedding bouquet pins. And you come down, finding your exact center, and you stick your pin through that center so that it's held in there, nice and tight. Then I go to the top of my ball, right where I brought you know, all my lines have lined up there and I just go dead center. And these pins are nice and long, tight, secure, and voila, you have your hanging ornament. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So congratulations on finishing this project. And if you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and list them below. Bye.